I had so much hate towards myself. You're your own biggest cock block. She had this amazing voice and he commented on her dress and fat shamed her in front of the whole nation. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather today, the Noongar Wadandi Mort. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Scratch the surface and everyone has a story. Welcome, Kaya, to the wisdom of women. Today joining us, we have Heidi, who is all about shedding your shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and getting naked and being confident and just being authentic and true. Yeah. So are we taking our clothes off? What? Not quite yet, Heidi. <laughs> I don't know, it's, a little, it's a little cold for me. <laughs> hey, we like a bit of um, hard nipples around here. <laughs> awesome. No, welcome. Thank and you. You have a lot going on yeah. at the moment. You know, yeah. you have a podcast and everything. But the big question is, you know, why? What, what started you on the journey to do all of this? Oh, that's such a big question. <laughs> well, it's funny that we're sitting here in Bunbury yeah. because I just spoke to you girls this morning at mm. the event that, you know, that we had. And my moment started on air at Hot FM and it was me talking about my hate towards myself and my body image. And I think mm. me seeing the ripple effect of me being vulnerable and honest in that moment on the radio as a radio presenter who was supposed to have her shit together and was supposed to be confident. That, I was going to say, let's yeah. set the scene for this. Yeah. So Heidi rocks into the southwest of WA. Yes. <laughs> a bigger than life on air radio personality. Yeah. Like the, you were huge and you always were Thank so you. confident <laughs> and happy and off you yeah. go. And you were like the girl that would walk in the room and go, rah, rah, I'm here and yeah. let me tell you another thing. So you were in people's faces and yeah. gave by all the impressions that you were self-confidence personified. Yeah. Yeah. But unbeknownst, of course, to all the listeners and everyone in your life, I suppose, there was something more going on underneath the surface and you decided one day, that's it, I'm, I'm going to tell the truth. Yeah, and I literally, as I was saying, like took my mask off that day and sat down and talked about how I had so much hate towards myself. And when I looked in the mirror, I was always met with the inner mean girls, you know, and that's the the noise that goes on in your head, you know, the questioning of yourself, why did you say that, why are you wearing that, you look disgusting, all that kind of stuff. And I think that's probably that moment on the airwaves that day, which was nearly 12 years ago, which is yeah. wild to think that I still talk about mm. it. And my whole book that I've just published is, you know, that journey. My why became, well, when we take our mask off, we connect, in a whole different way and people then finally see who we truly are and then we can start to live an authentic life. Now, I know authenticity gets thrown around really easily and it's been something that I've been thinking about a lot lately because I'm like, well, what is it? And it's showing up in just as you are, yeah. accepting yourself just as you are mm -hmm. and that's what I did on the airwaves that day. You did and that resonated with so many women. I mean, I remember I was listening and I was incredibly moved by it and I know you, you talk about how it, it went gangbusters for you. Yeah. At the station and, yeah. and personally face-to-face -face with Can you talk about Yeah. That? Well, so when I spoke about it on air and I'm sure you'll chuck it in show notes or do whatever so people can listen to the actual yeah. audio yes, if they want will. to. We'll, I'll, we'll I'll send that in. Yeah, yeah I'll send it to you. And when I, you know, went off air that day, I remember like sitting down with a mate who I just caught up with before and he was like, well, now you've got to talk the talk or, walk, you know, walk yeah. the talk. And I was like, what do you mean by that? And he's like, well, you've had this declaration of like that you're going to love yourself, that you're, you know, um, that you don't like yourself. And the phone lines just kept ringing and ringing and ringing. And I was like, well, it's bigger than me, this issue. And I think for the first time in such what felt like such a long time, I was truly seen. Mm. Like for years I spent my 20s drinking, sleeping around, partying. Oh, I did that in Bunbury too. <laughs> um, and, you know, I had a good time doing it, but it was the voices afterwards and the anxiety and the feedback I would give myself after I'd had those moments. Yeah. And so I think I just always put on that like big brave face, you know what I mean? Mm. And so like even walking in here today, I'll just be me. Like I'm yeah. coming in, I'm like, I'm here, everyone. Like, yeah. and, but... 
that comes from a place of confidence mm. now. And also just like, oh, everyone, like, you know, if they don't accept me, cool, whatever. Like, you know, but on the airwaves that day, like it rippled out to everyone. And like I said, I was truly felt like I was seen. And then reflecting back on other people, they, I think, felt seen for the yeah. first time. I think it resonated well. with so many women because yeah. it touched on a lot of the issues that we do battle with every day. And that is yeah. what our basic self-confidence and I remember hearing it today and I, I, I was about to start crying. <laughs> well, I did cry yeah. because, I, yeah. What, so what, I would like, what, what did, you, did you see yourself in that girl that was talking on the radio that day? Yeah, I mean, I know since year six, so I was like 11, 12, and I'd always be thinking, oh, my thighs are too big, look at all mm. the other people. You know, I'm, I'm so much bigger than everyone else. I wasn't at that, at that time, but I was just looking and, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're so hard on ourselves. Women so charge hard. themselves so badly. And we're constantly, I think, comparing ourselves. Oh. It's unrealistic. Yeah. And I think just searching for that validation as well. Mm. Like, and, you know, I think since talking about it on air that day and seeing like, you know, we all have that thing that doesn't feel like it's good enough or, yeah. you know, but this is through society's mm. expectations, mm. through, you know, the media even, yeah. you know, like growing up, I remember Paulini on, and I write about this in my book, like I remember her on Australian Idol and do you remember Dico said to her, she had this amazing voice and he commented on her dress and was like basically fat shame her in front of the whole nation and you know I remember thinking like oh so I do have to be like so my story in my head was I will be successful when I'm skinny yeah and that was the that was the line that I fed myself constantly Mm. with my inner mean girls and so seeing that play out in the media I was like oh you've just validated that yes and so like and that's just a moment I think that so many of us Mm. as like Mm -hmm. women and men can re- remember that moment and so for me I I was very successful in my career yeah. I still am very successful yeah. but it's been yeah. like me like that's a story that I believed my whole life that so but, when I was on the airwaves and I was doing all these amazing things I was still never successful because I wasn't skinny and it's interesting because it's gone to the point now where I think it's so institutionalized that women are used to commentary about their body about their age about if they're good looking if they're not good looking like do you know we yeah. hear this commentary yeah. all the time yeah that we've actually stopped I love your terminology you called it cock blocking yeah and it's like oh, and we do it, it, it like you said we do it to ourselves and oh. when you said that you were your biggest cock blocker yeah I was like oh my god mm. yes true because yeah. that and that's that imposter syndrome mm. and the doubting yourself and I think other people are saying what you think they're saying, but they're actually not saying it. Yeah. You're saying that. Yeah. I'm saying that, but no one else has said that. So where's that coming from? Mm, yeah, and it is. It's like, you know, I think for me it's realising like the stories that you've been telling yourself your whole life and then it just becomes like patterned behaviour. Yeah. Like that keeps you safe. Saying all those things to yourself is actually keeping you safe. It does, and our mind always resets to the yeah. to be in a comfort zone. Yeah. Because otherwise if you're pushing yourself out of that, you, you switch into that fight or flight yeah sort of scenario yeah and your brain saying no I don't like this yeah Let's exactly well and that day on the radio that was me pushing myself outside my comfort zone mm. that was me shedding my shit like and how I describe it now is like the layers of clothing are the shitty stories that I've told myself you know when I start taking my clothes off in public or whatever uh, yeah. and you know and that's become yeah. a symbol for me so that I see that and you know and then when you get down into your bra and undies like you're at your most vulnerable right like for most mm. people oh, yes. and so so for me, it's like those, uh, the shitty negative self-talk, like, oh, yeah, one layer over here. The things that society puts up, places on us, that layer yeah. of clothes. I mean, it doesn't work on Fashions of the Field, Joe. like when we used to do stuff together all those years ago. Yeah, yeah it doesn't. Because um, but- <laughs> you need to be in an outfit, but, you know, it's... But that's the- interesting. You t- Tell us about when you flew over and attended the Melbourne fashion. Oh, yes. So this is a great yarn. I love yeah. this. Yeah. Well, so just recently, so I've been, so my thing was when I spoke on air that day, like back at Hot FM, which is now Hit FM, I talked about how much I hated myself and I always hid my arms. Like I never got my arms out. So to get in swimwear, bra and undies was just wild. But through the last 10 years, I've made 1% changes. And those are like, you know, the first one was like actually buying a bikini. I wore it in my house for three years, like before I even went to a beach. Then I started going to the beach. Then I started like, and then all of a sudden I didn't give a fuck about what people thought on the beach. Then I was like, oh, photos on the beach. And then all these things. So 
to be able to get to Melbourne Fashion Week and do a what I call a power walk of no shame, you know, as walking billboards with like words all over us um, in our bra and undies, I had to do work to get there, right? Like my own yeah. personal development. Yeah. But they saw that we did a photo shoot, shoot in uh, – just constantly saying shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, shit, 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 shit. Um, we did a uh, photo shoot for my book when we came out, uh, when it came out in Melbourne in our bra and undies in Burke Street Mall. Yes, yeah. And so Melbourne Fashion Festival, some of the girls that worked on that saw us doing that and then they asked us to come and disrupt Melbourne Fashion Week. And so we gathered all these people. We went on Studio 10. We did some live crosses on the project and stuff like that to get people there and there was about 30 of us and I did it in collaboration with one of my friends Peter Hook who is in a wheelchair um I'm telling you that not because she's defined by her wheelchair but so you can just picture this fucking legend who just rocks her wheels and she's like changing the world like by you know diversity of disabilities Mm -hmm. and like you know celebrating all abilities and we did it together and we rocked that like we went up to the you know where you get photos on the media wall and everyone was cheering us because like we were all different Mm -hmm. shapes sizes Mm -hmm. colors and we were just there like representing each body and Mm -hmm. showing that all bodies are beautiful. Absolutely. And yeah. so I went from the girl on the radio who said that to now like 10, 11 years later writing this book and then doing things like that and people like, how? And I'm like, it doesn't fucking happen overnight. Yeah. Like it doesn't happen overnight. But that was like, again, another life-changing moment for me because yeah. I was exposing myself to a whole nother layer of being uncomfortable. What I find interesting about that though is there was some parts of the media yes. that what came back to you. <laughs> In a negative way. Yeah. And it's interesting. It's almost like they set women up. Oh, yeah, get out there. Show your true form. Don't hide yourself. But then they come back and they still have a go at you. Yeah, yeah. It was – so the article – like, so um, Nine News ran something that was really inspiring. Um, the project, we're going to get around it, but unfortunately they had a bigger news day that day that couldn't just follow us, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and then it was the Sun Herald and a girl writing for the Sun Herald. And mm. – When I first saw it, I was like, oh, any publicity is good publicity. And then I was like, no, no. Because, like, you know, having PR worked in the media and all that, I'm like, I get it. You can turn, spin anything you want, right? But I was like, no, this is a moment for us to continue this conversation that there's still so much work to do. Because her commentary was. She, I can't even remember exactly what she said, but it was her tone in there as well. But it was very derogatory. She just focused on the. Um, you know, the girls that you would be classified as fat who yeah. are, who love being fat and yeah. they think they're beautiful and I'm the same. I'm like, you know, it, we don't have to be fat phobic and that's ingrained in us as well. And, yeah. like, I'm learning all about that too. Well, why don't I want to be fat? Like, because society tells us not to, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we don't want to be like that. And so they just she just focused on that yeah. and just focused and the photo was that and it was just like that we ran, ran like disrupted the place without permission. And yeah, okay. had she have come over and been a journalist and got her facts, we would have been able to tell her and it would have been a really empowering awesome liberating story especially because there was two girls there with their wheels like you know disability like with their disabilities there was like short girls tall girls thin girls um you know wide girls all different shapes and sizes and colors and it was it was so much more to the story that it was just so disappointing it was like i would have just rather you say nothing yeah like, you know. And instead, the spotlight goes to that derogatory and it just yeah. feeds into yeah. all the insecurities and the judgment that just still continues to go. Yeah. And, and, you know, and like I always say to people, it's, you know, although like I want people to see us for more than our bodies, I still will use my body to create the conversations because there's so much work mm, to yeah. do. Yeah, there is. You know, it? eventually I don't want to. Like yeah. I don't want her to be like about my no, body and like it, being. to be more evolved and not have to. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. but it's funny because yeah. one of my videos went viral just before I did the war power walk of no shame in Melbourne in the US. And oh my God, I've never been trolled like I was in really? that 24 hours before. And it got in my really? head. I was questioning what I was doing. Cringe, you are so just like, I'm talking the most horrific things that you could say about someone. And they're, and like, I couldn't um, get mm. out of that because it was like, you, then you start to think like, oh my God, like. Well, am I doing something wrong? And da, 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 da. Mm. and then, you know, I spoke to some of my friends who are very powerful coaches and leaders who have, you know, done so much work on themselves. And they're like, this is why we need to do it. Like yes. this is, yeah. this is like, there's still so much work to do. Mm. And, you know, that's how I reframed it. And then like I did, used all my tools. Like I 
did breath work. I watched my housewives. I had, you know, a shower. I took, turned everything off. I rang people. I was vulnerable and said, I'm scared. Yeah. I'm scared to show up like this. I'm scared because of these, like what's going to happen to these other girls. And then I was like, oh, this is the work. Like, so I was just getting, elevating myself to the next level of being uncomfortable. Yes. And, you know, and then, like I said, in that moment, I realized like, fuck, there's still so much work to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, in, in all those horrible messages, were there a lot of good messages? Oh, my God. Yeah. So when I first, like, and this is the thing, right, I have so many super fans and we spoke about mm. that today. I've got so many amazing people that love and froth and cheer mm. me on. Mm. So when that video first came out, I was like, yes, 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 yes. It was as soon as it went viral mm. in the US where people don't know me, they don't understand the concept from a seven-second video, yeah. bang, judgment, judgment, judgment. But what I had to remember in that moment is I'm like, well, I do have this thing where I'm like, there's some people that I just see next Tuesdays. Yeah. And then there's some people that it's like, well, I'm triggering something in them. Like people saying we should be arrested and all this stuff, which is just hilarious because every time that I've done Bra and Undies walk through shopping centres, public places, police are there cheering us on going, go girls. This is so awesome. Mm. Why are you here? Like they're not going to arrest us, you dickheads. Like we're not doing anything wrong. It's not public nudity. (laughs) Exactly. I mean, I have done public nudity here, but uh, that (laughs) was like trying to get my maternity photos in a public space. Yeah, exactly. And they're great photos, by the way. Um, (laughs) But yeah, it's like so, you know, I just see that there's so much work to do. And what I find really sad is when I see those messages, Mm. we're wondering why there's a problem with children. Mm. giving bullying each other online Mm. and it's like well have you seen the parents have you seen the adults what they're doing what Mm. they're saying to people and it's like well no wonder monkey see monkey do yeah that's right it's learned behavior yeah and it's very sad as we're talking about that in this day and age we are still having conversations around women feeling self-empowered yeah and happy with themselves if a bloke was doing it, it'd be like, yeah, you're on your Tomo. Yeah. yeah. Whatever, you know? Yeah, bloody Tomo. <laughs> He's yeah. always in his jocks. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Like I remember, you know, when we used to do stuff at the radio station, like, you know, if Tom was running around in his, I think we used to do You've Been Neutered. <laughs> oh, Lord. That was like that one was of the back things. back in the day we didn't get away with things I know, like I definitely that. couldn't do that now. <laughs> but if, can you imagine, like, if I did that yeah. online, like, oh. I would have got so much shit oh, for God. it. But with him it was funny. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I did think it was hilarious. It was a very funny concept. Could have taken us to the capital city, that one. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, you know, it's just the way that we're, you know. Yes. It's the, it's just a conversations like this. that. So you're growing, you're feeling more empowered and clearly yeah. you, you've turned around because you, you've put the book yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, what did you think was the main focus and the push that you really needed to be looking at with it? Oh, there was so many things because, like, especially, like, becoming a mum as well like there were so many things that I went through like I had powerful moments of when I was a like you know going through my body image at the start was hectic as you know the first few months but then finding myself towards the end of my pregnancy and really falling in love with my body and then like wanting to make that change for Memphis was so powerful so there were so many moments in the book it was hard to like Mm. I remember when people would sit down and be like so what's it about I'm like oh well, I guess it's a memoir and, you know, and trying to sell it and everything. But it is. It's from – it's a girl who went from, like, lost and anxious to confident and self-assured. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm confident and self-assured 24-7. Mm. It just means that, you know, I take you on the journey and I tell the stories and, you know, seven years in the making it was, there were times that I sat there like, oh, do I tell the story about my first boyfriend? Mm. Like, do I tell the story about the guy in London who I found the text message and he was like, yeah, fucked the fat one. Like that was the – and so, you know, I write about these kind of things and so – but then you have to go back and relive it and feel it and so it was a very like powerful, reflective, you know, crazy journey to go on but um, I can't remember if that answered your question. No, it does and it's interesting because you keep (laughs) keep with the vulnerability aspect of it because it is very much about women opening up and talking about their experiences and the things that hurt. Mm, Yeah. And I think, well, I mean, this is just such a random thing, but like the other day I was doing a talk in Onslow um, up north in WA oh. and this guy came up to me at the end and he was like, that was so awesome, like courageous, blah, 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 mm. and shook his hand. And then I was like, do I know you from somewhere? <laughs> and he was like, oh, I'm from Bunbury. And I was like, oh, oh. shit. I was like, did I fuck you or fight you? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I actually I said, said that. that. And then it was a very funny moment and he was like, oh, no, like talked about his friends. And I'm like, well, why am I embarrassed by that? Like because – and then part of me continuously stepping into my, Mm. you know, more authentic self 
in everywhere and truly because I have these conversations I wasn't sharing some of those things on social media and I was like oh this is the next level for me and I put it out and it went gangbusters this post on how I spoke about it and then everyone wanted to read my book yeah and I was like oh that's me and why I guess I wanted to share that is because a vulnerable part of me is sometimes I guess I still do shame myself for my past Mm. even though I've wrote about it even though I've shared some of the stories because I am worried about like oh well what's my husband's mum gonna think or what's Mm. But also, like, does it really matter? Like, this is... So what Mm. happened in that moment was I gave... Like, the messages that I got were, like, people just being so grateful that giving themselves permission Mm. to be more themselves. It's Mm. relatable. Yeah. 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 And they were, like... One girl was, like, I was always that fighter. Like, I was either, you know, fighting you or fucking you. And I was, like, that was pretty much me, too. Like, I was feisty (laughs) or I was, like, a lover, you know? And yeah, so like, and and why I guess I want to share that is the continue, the continual journey of me of just exploring that vulnerability. And like, it doesn't have to be these dark stories of like, you know, anxiety or body hate or whatever. It's like, I guess the vulnerability of just continuously being ourselves. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And as you say, you've talked about the small steps. Yeah. It's the 1%. It's so the 1%. It's the like literally the one percent because then if you do that by the end of the year it's like three hundred and sixty five. Yeah, when you said that today, I yeah. was like, Oh, that's more than a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and like yeah. so a lot of people I use the example of my book, obviously, Drunk on Confidence. It's you know, say if there's three hundred and sixty five yeah. pages, so many people cock block themselves and they go, I'm not a reader or this and I'm like, you know, and I'm like, but imagine if you just read one page a day. Yeah. Like by the end of the year you've read a book. Yeah. yeah. Like literally, that's 1%. And then if you start to think like that in all areas of your life, it's like one of the girls I was coaching today, I sent her a message after this and she's like, I've stopped walking. She's been going through something. And I was like, well, 1%, like just go do five minutes yeah. and then I want a photo. Mm. And then, you know, it's – and Atomic Habits is the book that I've read by James Clear and he talks very much about like the 1%. And I was like, well, how does this work for me? Because like, I don't, you know, I'm not an athlete. I'm not this because he works a lot with with athletes and mindset and stuff. Great book too, but obviously read mine first. Um, (laughs) But yeah, yeah. Like, come on, everyone. (laughs) But yeah, he talks about the 1% and I was like, oh, this is like really powerful stuff when Mm. you can break it down Mm. to be better than you were the day before. It's just 1%. Yeah. Like, that's it. It's always talks about the, That's so simple. the longest yeah. journey always starts with one step. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And like, you know, one day at a time, yeah. like, you know, one moment, yeah. like one conversation. It's like, understanding the value of yeah. just that one moment. Yeah. It doesn't have to be momentous. You do not have to change your life overnight. Yeah. That's yeah. not what this is the, about. And this is what I think people expect because mm. society's put that on us. Yeah. Mm. Like, and so we do, we think there's a magic pill to lose weight. We think there's a magic pill to like build confidence. No, mate, this is like 10 years making. Yeah. Like yeah. this is not, not an overnight success in confidence. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what so I mean? True. Like it's, and same with my career. Like mm. it was this every day I had to show up, even when I was scared shitless of what everyone was saying and thinking and scared of myself and what I was saying and like, you know, and then it was just like that 1% just get better every single day. Yep. Yep. Mm. And you're right. And that's self-perpetuating because you start doing that and suddenly yeah. you're acknowledging and you're giving self a little bit of kudos. Yeah. So that positivity just continues to generate. Yeah. And before you know it, you're being awesome like Heidi. Yeah. Oh, thank okay. you. Thank you. <gasps> yes. Yeah. But it, it's true. And like, you know, and that's one thing I like, I talk to Memphis about my little boy and, you know, I go to the beach and like a lot of people don't realize like, but I'm scared of the waves. I'm, I swim in the ocean. I try and swim every day because it scares me. Like the unknown of what's in there, Mm. the seaweed, the big waves. But I just go in there every day and I expose myself to that and those one percenters and then I just get more and more confident. On you. Yeah. I'm Should we do in the Rotto swim naked? Oh, okay. Next That's job. probably yeah. not going to happen, Joe. I couldn't even swim 500 meters. Naked so when I say swim. I'm swimming, I'm just like, you know, splashing <laughs> amongst <laughs> the waves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> trying not that. to get dumped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But when I get dumped, because that's what I'm scared of, I get up and I cheer. Yay. Because I'm like, yes, yes, I survived. I'm still alive. I didn't yeah. die. And one day I came up with like blood. <laughs> all down oh. my nose and I was like I'd been smashed around the wave Ooh. and I'm like but I'm alive I did it because like, yeah. I was so scared of getting dumped but I was like well the only way I'm going to get through this is if I actually get dumped oh, by the way awesome. yeah yeah <laughs> doing the things that can scare I us. ask you know your podcast that mm. you do with Biffo oh yeah first time so parents that's real time as it's happening yeah because I know you're in the middle of this yes discussion at the moment and yeah and I understand that 
Yeah. Um, so we're talking about whether to have another baby yes, or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to have another child. And that can be a really, really hard conversation. Sometimes break a deal breaker. And oh. Even having a child sometimes can be, yeah. can be at that. So that's um, real time. So first time parents, we started recording it when Memphis was a week old. Yeah. And my thing was, I was like. Because you didn't have anything better to do. (laughs) I know. (laughs) I think obviously now I look back and probably reflect, it was um, probably a validation thing that I needed to feel like I was still doing something in the media. And like, do you know what I mean? Like now if I look back and reflect that, but it honestly saved our marriage. Like. Us, because when you get in a podcast with your partner or you, f- you know, whatever, like, because you don't listen to each other sometimes because you're fucking defensive or you're this, you're that. You can't have these sometimes really tough conversations. Yeah. But when you sit down and do it on a podcast, when you feel like there's a mediator in the room, which is yeah. like the microphone, <laughs> or, you measured. know, you, you literally mm-hmm. hear each other. And so we stopped it and then our relationship started to go separate ways there for a while because, you know, Griffo struggled to connect with Memphis. I was like having, you know, my business, I was getting all my needs met in my business and he was like definitely going through postpartum Mm. and we kind of stopped the podcast there for a while and we have brought it back season three, like talking about our relationship, being coached live on the podcast about how to communicate about having a baby another baby because he doesn't want another baby and I do and I said the only way that we can come back I reckon is if we start talking about it without defense because when we do we shut down or you know we go into our like coping mechanisms or you know um just patterns and that kind of stuff and as you say so have a moderator who's sitting there and guiding you through which sometimes it's just the microphone that we're recording (laughs) ourselves like because you know that there's other people listening and now it's like he feels like he's given back to the world like he feels this like fulfillment and our relationship is growing and changing and he's doing the work because I said to him I can I will know what will be okay now like I trust in the universe and I trust in our love and Memphis's love and I said but I need to know that you're coming from a healed place because what you've gone through I don't think that your reaction and why your body or whatever you're saying, no, 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 is from a healed place because you lost me and, you know, we lost each other. And so I was like, if you do that part and then I will do the fucking work afterwards if that's what we come to. And, you know, but I was like, I need to know that you're coming from a healed place. And then doing this work with his name's James Fish Gill. Well, Mm -hmm. his name's James Gill, but they call him Fish. He's a relationship therapy Mm. coach and like he's, you know, in communication and he has been literally sitting down with us on the podcast and we're sharing our whole therapy sessions with everyone because we're like, it's actually making us heal and making us get to a place of, Mm. you know, where we can talk about it. Because I do normally get quite emotional about it. Like but it thinking, is an emotional subject. Yeah. And having children and family and particularly if one partner is a bit resistant and there are reasons why. Yeah. You can't just oh, accept it. But you're digging mm. to find out why yeah. it's resistant. And yeah. like you say, if you know why and he's healed you and you don't have another child, you're, you can I will on. be able to work through yeah. that. And but that's if, huge. Yeah, but if he didn't, if he hasn't, mm. like, do you know what I mean? I'm like, well, then I don't know. But I did, like, when it first started happening, I'm like, fuck. Like, are we going to break up? Mm. Do I go find someone else and have a baby with? Like, but then I'm like, but this is our family. Yeah. And this is like, a, like, I love us. Yeah. And so, but when you have that other desire of like, I've, and, you know, and part of it is like, there's a part that I do want to rewrite my, you know, pregnancy. And like, you know, there were so many things that I would do differently. And like, mm. I want to carry that baby again. And, you know, I don't know if I will, like, mm. cause you know, I'm 39 now too. So I'm also like, mate, my fucking clock's ticking, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we just, yeah. So we're doing it on the podcast and like, we hear each other now and we see each other in each mm. other's pain. Whereas before we couldn't do that. Gee, that's, that's really brave. And it's, yeah. it is really important and I'm trying to find the right word but to to bring out the fact that a man had went through postpartum yeah and that he struggled to to bond with his son yeah um he's so fucking awesome like how he speaks and like you know when we were recording it weekly at the time of like when we were back in it you don't realize like you're just kind of putting your one foot in front of the other right like you're just and so we didn't probably until reflection go like there was like postpartum Yes. yes you know yeah. and 
that we had like I changed careers, he'd left FIFO, we started living together the first time in seven years, like and we and had a got kid. A tiny baby. Like, you know, there were mm. so many things. Mm. And well, no wonder people get divorced, like oh, after God. a kid. Yeah. Oh, like it is just completely and utterly life changing. I got divorced. After a child. Yeah, but that's what I mean yeah. because we're not given the yeah. tools, I think, to work through it. Like with mm, and yeah. that's what for me it's come down to communication. Yeah, oh yeah, you're right. absolutely. Like, you're and, right. and also yeah. like you've obviously picked a right the right partner because yeah. He's open to communicate. He's open to talk to you from his heart. Yeah. Which a lot of yeah. m- men don't feel so comfortable doing, particularly in public. Well, we're not taught to, yeah. are we? Like no. they're, they're not, ta- you know, and this is where they're like, I think the disconnect comes with men and women is like we, especially in Australia, I feel like there's this whole thing of like, they're, you know, she'll be right, mate. Mm. And it's like, that's the mentality of, you know, the men that we get mm. and, like when they're willing to do the work, which yes. is what Griffo's doing. He, he really is. He's, yeah. Because it was like you either join me or like I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Like I'm choosing to live the best life mm. here. Yeah. Like if you want to stay, like that's cool and if you're happy with that, but he wasn't, like, yes. you know. Was- so, yeah, it's he's. I'm really proud of him. And like I do, I get always get emotional when I talk about mm. him because he's been my biggest fan and now I'm able to be his biggest fan, mm. yeah, you know, like great. in watching him. Mm like unleash you know himself and like he did his first interview on the podcast the other day like talking to another guy who didn't want to have another mm. child but then now they've just announced that they're having another oh, child wow. so you know he's stepping like and he's just his sparky like you know manages some workshop <laughs> boys and like but he's having these conversations and yeah he's leading the way and I love that I absolutely agree yeah because it is a big top- topic and it shouldn't just always be you trying to solve the problem. Yeah. Mm. It's a partnership. Yeah. You're married for for a reason. You have your kids together for a reason. So. Yes. But you're right. Traditionally, men come from mm. that sort of, and I, I suppose it's generational, that position of, as you say, you'll be right, mate. Yeah. And they've never been encouraged to really open up. Yeah. And even feelings. us women either, really, when you yeah. think about it. That's why we armour the fuck up. Mm. Like, yeah. You know, part of the, like, you know, building all those walls and armour is because, like, we did have that generation of, like, just get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's been getting significantly more difficult, too, for younger women coming into this environment. I mean, we talk about social media and the impact, rah, rah, rah. Um, But I know in when I was a kid growing up, I had all these aunties around me and everyone used to meet and they used to have all these great conversations. So I came from an environment where women were really connected. Yes, I love that. And they were always there and supportive. So for for me, inherently I find women so much easier to sit down and have conversations. Oh, same. Yeah. So good. And that's why I always target women usually. But now I'm realising like with Griffo, like how much, you know, the impact he's having on men and stuff as well, you Mm. know. Yeah. Really important. Yeah, that's so true. Memphis. Don't you guys want the waterworks? Oh, my God. So how much of a change? Like it just, yeah, to your core, isn't it? Yeah. You're looking at this little baby coming into the world. Yeah. You've got all your own shit going on. And you're just thinking, I want my child to have better I want my child yeah and like he's just taught me so much Mm. you know like to slow down to smell the roses to like you know I was just thinking back the other day when we were walking to the beach and I said yeah you can push your trolley like it's so we live 600 meters but then we go up to the surf club every morning and him and I have our mornings together because for years I didn't have mornings I was everyone else's Mm. morning you know being breakfast radio Mm. and so this has been so important for me since I was a little baby and I like I said to him yeah you can push the trolley this one day (laughs) This is like two k's down the road to the surf club. Fucking hell! I was like, "What?" Not there on Friday. I literally was like, "Whoa!" He's teaching me literally right in the mo- to be in the moment. Yeah, like and, and to hard. slow down and yeah. When oh. you're a busy person, hundred oh, percent, particularly busy in your head yeah. person, it's really hard to stop. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, he's just constantly teaching me, and you know, like I think the moment that I had for him, I write about it in my book that. I was in Broome and I decided to buy a bikini and wear it for the first time. And Griffo was taking photos and I was 30 weeks pregnant. And Griffo had a tear running down his face because he was just like, I've never seen you like so free. And then I remember just putting my hands on my tummy and I was like, I don't know if you're a boy or a girl, but I was like, this is the moment that is going to change my life and yours. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you can't go 30 
five years of hating yourself, like, mm. you know, or questioning yourself or comparing yourself and everything. And I remember talking to the little baby and I was like, this is like, this is the work. Like, this is where I make the change. Mm. And then I remember I was standing in the mirror after three weeks after Memphis was born and I could see like my overhang, like, you know, had the mm. C-section scar. Yeah. I was like mm-hmm. focusing on, on all the bits that weren't perfect, not that they ever had been. Um, and I remember sitting there about to like talk to myself like shit, like in the mirror and I've got this little baby out there and I was like, no, Heidi, this is it. I looked myself dead in the mirror and I took photos and I posted them straight away to Instagram and I was like, this is like my, you know, my body post baby. And then they published it in the West Australian, this massive photo. And they're like, Heidi Anderson is so brave. And I was like, actually, I'm not. This is real. Like, I'm not brave yeah. standing here. I am like confronting my inner mean girls in that moment so that my son can then not hear his mum talk to herself the way and I'm a role model. But it was really like that was the moment for me. Like standing in the mirror, I was like, that promise you made to yourself on the beach and him, like this is the this is the work. And so people always ask me like, how can I be better for my kids and this and that? And I'm like, well, what are you role model? Like it, what conversations are you having at home? How are you looking at yourself in the mirror? What are you saying? Like, mm-hmm. because it's easy, like if we're not judging other people and not talking about other people, but really how are they seeing you behave? Mm-hmm. And so that moment was huge. And like I said, thinking about that being published in the paper, I was just like, oh, yeah, that's not brave. And I remember feeling the shame, like, oh, my God, like they've posted that photo. Oh. And then I was like, oh, no, fuck this. This is my body. I've got to celebrate this. And, like, that was me doing more exposure therapy. Yeah, it's you incredibly know? powerful in that moment, though, Yeah, for you, for listening to you talk about it. And, and imagine I can't imagine looking at a paper photo yeah, knowing that everyone across, you know, yeah. Western Australia. Yeah, and then went into the Daily Mail. Or... So it went national. The photo went wow. national. <laughs> so I'm interested to hear kids to talk about and yeah. reflect like as a, a, you know, a young woman coming yes. into the world with all that. What, what kind of stuff from what Heidi's saying really impacts you? All of it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like I've always had an issue with my body. Looking out the, I have a lot of stretch marks because mm. I gained weight really quick, quickly. So mm. then, I I obviously got self conscious about that. You know, I I don't wear short sleeve t shirts anymore. Yeah. So like I have them on my arms as yeah. well. Yeah. Um. So I just hearing someone, I'm I like, know. oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. but it's like reframing that, right? Like, and so. For me, it's like one of the things like when I beat myself up about my tummy for years, like that was what I hid in my arms. It was like, okay, well, now I'll just talk about it. like it's Memphis's first home. Like that's what my tummy is now. Like it's it Memphis's yeah. first home. You yeah. know, so you've got to find things of how you can like – because I think – as women, we tend to focus on the gap, right? Like what we don't have Mm -hmm. and what we, you know, and what everyone else has and what we don't. So like when you're looking at your body now, like how can you start to change the story? Like how can you start to celebrate your stretch marks? Mm -hmm. Like how can you start to see them Mm -hmm. in a different way? That doesn't mean that you're going to love them sick. Like, do you know what I mean? Or like, you know, Mm -hmm. but you might. And, you know, like just take those little baby steps of like when you're seeing yourself in the mirror, like how can you change th- and create a new story? Yeah. You that's get that choice. That no I'm, one else does. I'm getting better at it. I just yeah. think of it as it's a part of my journey. Yes. It's, just, it's and, part of your and story. I that. Yeah. So as a mum when I look at Sid because she's gone through, you know, a chronic mental con- uh, a, a medical condition that developed five years ago. And, you know, I'm just grateful that she's here and she's talking. And yeah. so I, for me, none of that matters, matters and it, whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. It shouldn't. Like, is, yeah. Yeah. How do you feel when you... But she's just said, you know, it's part of my journey. That's such yeah. a big thing to yeah. say, mm. Sid, you know. I, I'm getting better at it. it. I'm, getting, it. I'm getting really good at shutting down when I'm about to say negative things. Well. Yeah. Or just even becoming friends with that or like inviting... Because like one thing that I do as well is like, well, where does that thought come from actually? Like mm-hmm. go... Because is it like what someone said to you when you were little? Is it like it could have been anyone, like yeah. anyone close to you like that, you know, or was it that where you read something in a magazine and then that became your story? Like, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? Like my thing was you got to be skinny, you got to be skinny to be successful. That happened when I was like really, really little. But then I kept seeing things in my life that validated that. So, you know, like even just inviting that in and being like, okay, so where is that thought coming from? Like yeah. why am I having that? And then you can like change the, you know, the story and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. 
So, yeah, tell me a little bit more about you. Okay. No, this is it's like a dating podcast, podcast yeah. now. <laughs> I want to know more about you. It's interesting talking about the two, the, you know, the two wolves within us. Um, I, I don't know if you've yeah. heard a, a Cherokee yeah. um, sort of legacy or, or legend that they talk about feeding the two wolves within you. So one wolf is, is the wolf of, of fear and anxiety yes. and sadness. And then you've got the other wolf that is that wolf of, of joy and, and, you know, happiness and um, of accomplishment. And it's about feeding the wolf. The, the wolf that you feed is the wolf that wins. Yes. So yeah. it is. It's watering the flowers and not the weeds. Yeah. And constantly taking in that positive aspect. Yeah. This is like Quote Isn't City. It? I'm loving this. Uh, no, we're so, going to have to get yeah. someone to like write out all these quotes and share it with us yeah. like, uh, so that we can just share them all on social so we can amazing. start putting them on our mirrors as our affirmations. Yeah. But they're, they're and, and they are affirmations like you yeah. said. Yeah. That, that, yeah, mm. feed the flowers, not the weeds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the other one you said yesterday or the other day about the bees and oh, and the bees and the shit. What's oh, that? I've Tell us. One. I I read this somewhere, and I, I wish I could attribute this to whoever it was. Uh, but it's this quote about how bees don't waste their time explaining to the flies why honey is better than shit. Like, move on. Yeah, they just like everyone yeah. knows it. Yeah, exactly. And there's another quote, and it's as well. so damn. Good. You just need to have like quotes, oh. like I said, coming from this podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's another one that says, uh, "If you sit in shit long enough, it stops smelling." So, get because the what, out that's of what we do. We always ask our guests for a quote. Oh, oh yes. shit! Yeah, like oh, <laughs> like a quote, or or is there something that sticks in your mind that? Mm. And I know I asked this question. I've got so before, many, but then like pressure. Do, do you, know, do you so think much. a woman really needs to hear at least once in her life? Mm. What is something that you think inherently a woman, a young woman, an old woman? You know, there's there's all these amazing things. Yeah, something that mm. I've got. Um, I was like, I don't think I've got my book here. Um, it was how I ended the book. Um, I guess it's like this, right? Like we see so many people saying like, don't give a shit what people think, like, you know, give zero fucks. Like, and I totally am still a work in progress with that too. Like I'm a human, you know, I still care at times what people think yeah, and awesome. especially your loved ones and, you know. Um, but I think for me I'd wished someone had talked to me about like self-development from a really young age and understanding my inner critic you know, and that inner critic then became those inner mean girls, which like how I lived so much of my life. Like NLP, have you heard of neuro-linguistic programming? Mm -hmm. Fuck, I did that last year and it was honestly, yeah, it everyone should be taught it. It's, you know, I mean like I'm not getting paid for this, I'm no ambassador or anything like that, but when I did it, it was like the understanding of how our mind work was just like profound and I'm like this is the stuff that we need to be teaching our kids this is the stuff that if we taught the mums the dads the parents the caregivers or whatever you know because we need to be taught but yeah. like then it becomes like you know taught in schools and stuff like I wish I was just taught more stuff in like year one on how to communicate like on how to love myself but also part of that loving yeah. myself is understanding my inner critic mm. so like you know meeting that at a much earlier age Instead of just like off to school, maths, fucking whatever mm. bullshit you yeah. learn. I failed English and I've written a book. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, there you go. I get paid to communicate even though I couldn't <laughs> communicate. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. and it's like just challenging, challenge yeah. the norms. Be open-minded and question everything. Yeah, yeah that's like, so Like, question true. everything you're taught yeah. and question everything you're told. Yeah. Because, like, believe me, I'm a conspiracy theorist. That's a whole other podcast. Yes. Like, put the tin hat on. That's what my family says. Oh, God, I'd love to I hear I love a good those. conspiracy theory. <laughs> but it's like, you know, so many of them have turned into factual things that have happened. Mm. So, like, but for me, it's like I think just being open to question everything and challenge that. Yeah. Even me, like, you know, challenge what I say. Go read your own, mm -hmm. like, find your own information. Like, I'm not speaking yeah. gospel. I'm speaking gospel what's worked for me in yeah. my life. It's yeah. critical thinking. Yeah. As you say, question. Yeah. 
question because everyone comes from a different perspective. Yeah. Everyone has their own narrative going on behind it all. Yeah. We need to be much more critical with the information we're allowing to stay in Yes. Yes. And we you have don't have to be. to be a jerk about it. Just no. be sit there and be like, oh, interesting. Mm. Like, I know I, like, my, one of my things is always to, like, sometimes, like, you know, over the years I've challenged my opinion opinions and defensiveness, like, being working with guys in the media and stuff. So now it's, like, you know, challenging myself to, like, be, you know, sit and listen without judgment, you know, mm. without jumping in and, you know, that kind of stuff. So mm. I don't know if that is the quote or if oh, I've no, answered the oh, question. Or like, second, <laughs> the we'll get one out of it. I can oh, turn that into a reel. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, seven uh, reels. Yes, yeah, seven reels. <laughs> well, seven little yeah. quotes. Heidi, we thank you. in a little tea wow. I love it. Today. So it's so awesome. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. And like, you know, the fact that you girls are doing this is stepping outside your com- oh, comfort zone. Completely. You're challenging the norm of like people's thinking yeah. and, you know, just bringing like minded people together. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank sharing you. The knowledge. Yes. Um, if you've been affected by any of the topics discussed today, we'll have links below and mm. uh, for more show inf- information and to subscribe as well. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. And please review only if it's five stars. Uh, <laughs> yes. Only if it's five yeah. exactly. And slide into our DMs, tag us. Do yeah, all but the I'm going to be sliding into all sorts of DMs. Oh! That's what I said to oh. the ladies when I left it. I'll be sliding into your DMs. Don't worry. <laughs> please. You slid into mine all those years ago. Oh. Did, yeah. yeah. Well, that was more like an email yeah. or was it phone an email? call. I can't, it, was, it was back dinosaurs. Before we, before we slid. Yeah. 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 Weren't existing. yeah, exactly. What was a DM? <laughs> <What's> a DM? <laughs> oh, thanks, girls. Thanks, Heidi. Yeah. And always remember every day, you are remarkable.